out of there. Yeah. Ah. Boy, we got to get out of here. Got to get out of here. Turn with me to Acts chapter 4. We 
were in Acts chapter 3 last week as we talked about Peter healing the lame man at the gate called Beautiful, Acts chapter 4, we're going to be on in the 13th through the 22nd verse, Acts chapter 4, verses 13 through 22. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation of Scripture, but please follow along with whatever translation you may have. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing right there among them, there was nothing the council could say. So they ordered Peter and John out of the council chamber and conferred among themselves. What should we do with these men? They asked each other. We can't deny that they have performed a miraculous sign. And everybody in Jerusalem knows about it. But to keep them from spreading their propaganda any further, we must warn them not to speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. So they called the apostles back and commanded them never again to speak or to teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, do you think God want us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. The council then threatened them further. But they finally let them go because they didn't know how to punish them without starting a riot. But everyone was praising God for this miraculous sign, the healing of a man who had been laying for more than 40 years. Verse 18, if you would. So they called the apostles back and commanded them never again to speak or to teach in the name of Jesus. Just for a little while, I want to talk to you from the subject, Say His Name. You may be seated. Say His Name. Since the beginning of time, those in power have always been willing to do whatever it took to remain in power. Even homicide, and I dare say genocide. In this country, rich white men are those men who have such power because they sit at the head of every system that runs this country. The banking system, educational system, medical system, housing, judicial, politicians, they pretty much run everything. And 80 Six percent of the wealth in the United States are owned by white men. And so they run this country. And any individual, a group, or movement whose purpose is to bring awareness or to expose or to eliminate the wickedness of those in power has always met their demise in America. They do this by three ways over the centuries I've watched. First, they try to discredit the person. You think about this, as soon as somebody's going against them, you start seeing reports, uh, Dr. King, he's a communist. You know, they always try to discredit. Then they try to destroy. Uh, they try to destroy by using the systems that they have. They make it so they can't get money or they can't own land or they have to shut down their headquarters. And if that doesn't work, America don't mind just killing you. <laughs> they have killed so many amazing leaders whenever they felt that somebody was getting the people's attention and bringing awareness to their sinfulness, they will kill them and cover them up all in an attempt to silence them. They don't mind you living. They don't mind you being in this country as long as you don't speak against what they're doing. And so they do that 
to try to silence people. And the thing is, when we think about in the early 2014, the sin came out, say their name, as they began to protest because of the death of Sandra Bland. They took to the streets saying, sign, say her name. And then, of course, in 2020, when most of us was at the house because the country had closed down because of COVID-19, we watched in horror as a white police officer put his knee on the neck of George Floyd and kept it there until life just drained out of him. And we, in the midst of a pandemic, took to the streets, protesting, and even rioting. Because Dr. King said the riot is the voice of those who are helpless when they can't do anything else. But it wasn't just in the United States that we were protesting. It was all the way across this world. Everybody was protesting. And one of the number one rallying cry they had was say his name. Say his name because I told you when things happen in America, they try to destroy the person. Try to discredit them. As soon as this thing came out about George Floyd, what did they start talking about? He has an arrest record. He had weed in his system. What weed got to do with you killing me? And so what we did, we took to the street to remind them that George Floyd was more than his rap sheet. More than an assailant. More than a case file, he was a father, he was a brother, he was a man, he was human. And until we get to the place that we no longer allow them to get away with the things they do, they will always have control. This is the same thing going on in Acts chapter 4. As Peter and John have come to the temple last week, we talked about it, chapter 3 of Acts. They come and they heal this lame man at the gate called Beautiful. This lame man enter into the temple with them, shouting, dancing, and praising God. And the people there in the temple began to worship Peter and John. And Peter said quickly, hold up. We didn't do this in our power. But this man here now stands because of this man called Jesus. The same man that you crucified. Some of you did it out of ignorance, but God now has raised him from the dead and now given him a name above all other names. For at the name of Jesus, man shall now be saved. And the Bible says that 5,000 people were added to the church. Peter just got through preaching on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 are added. So we do that number now in Jerusalem, there are 8,000 Christians. And the Sanhedrin Council, those who are in power. Because from the beginning of time, it has always been a small group of individuals who possess most of the power that affect the mass population. And in Jerusalem, it was the Sanhedrin Council. Because whoever owned and whoever managed religion then also controlled politics. That there was no difference. And even today for Jews... Their religion is their politics. Their religion is their culture. So whoever ran the religion then ran the people. That's the same reason why they killed Jesus. Not because of what he was preaching, but because people were actually listening to him, following him, and their eyes were becoming open to what they were doing. And they said, we got to get rid of this man. We got to get rid of this man. So they killed him. They crucified him, nailed him to a cross, and they assumed that they were done with this man called Jesus. Now here comes some of his followers and doing a miraculous sign. And at that moment, Peter could have just become one of the new prophets of the day. He could have been the hot preacher in town. And y'all know how we do when there's a hot preacher in town. You leave your church and go to that church. Come here, somebody. But he said, it's not me, but it was Jesus the reason why this man stands, the same one you have crucified. Isn't it funny 
how the enemy thinks that what he's doing is going to destroy you. But you look back on it now and that's what developed you. And maybe there's a few of you in this house right now with hindsight. You can look back and now say, God, thank you for the devils. Thank you for them ones that came against me and all the stuff that they said against me and how they tried to stop me because it made me pray more. It made me trust you more. It built my faith more. And if it had not been for them devils in my life, I wouldn't be here right now. Is there anybody can thank God now for the devils and the haters in your life because what the devil meant for evil, come here somebody, won't God turn it around for the good? So now they're here, and the Sanhedrin council hears this commotion. Notice now that the people are listening to these men. So they have them arrested, bring them into the chamber, and says, in whose name did you do this miracle? Peter said, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. The same one you crucified. I love this. I love this because of who it is. Remember now, this is the same Peter on the night that Jesus is betrayed, on the night that Jesus is arrested. This is the same Peter who denied him and who was a coward at that time. And that's why you can't count people out. Because I might have been a coward last month, but some got a hold of me. And now I don't care what you say. I love Jesus and I'll let everybody know that I love Jesus. Peter said it is Jesus, the same one you crucified. God has now made him both Lord and Savior. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess. In case you haven't heard it in a little while, let me drop it in your spirit right now. There's something about the name Jesus. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. When you think about the name, I want you to understand the name by itself, if you don't know the man, means nothing. The name only has authority because of who it's connected to. And when you use that name, you gain access into heaven. When you use that name, you get connected to the power who stands behind that name. And you got to be careful when you try to bother somebody that's connected to that name. At the name of Jesus, there's power in that name. You got to understand, we understand about names. Some of you love dropping names. Nothing wrong. If you can drop a name that can get you access, then drop it. I don't know how many of you can use my name. Uh, <laughs> I, I go to Word of Change. Have you heard of Dr. Bolton? Uh, it's okay because we understand and we know that that name is connected to something. Think about this. You, you're driving down the highway and probably a 150-pound police officer stands in front of your car and does his hand like that. What do you do? You stop. You don't stop because of little Timmy. You, you don't know him, but he has on a uniform. And the uniform gives him authority not by the name, his name on the badge, but by the name on top of that badge. Sparber City Police Department, uh, Sparber County. And you know that the authority lies in that name. And because he is connected to that name, and that name has given him authority to do what he does, when he puts his hand up, all of Spartanburg County is putting their hand up. And you might run through Timmy, but you can't run through the whole department. Come here, somebody. When I put the name of Jesus up, you might get through Belton, but I'm connected to somebody that got all power in his hand. There's something about the name Jesus. So Peter says, it's Jesus, the one you killed. And they said, we got to do something about this. And I like this. He says, when they looked upon them, they realized that they were unlearned men. You got to understand that all of these in the Sanhedrin Council had been to seminary. 
They spend their life studying the scripture and going to school how to interpret the word of God. So they were the doctors and the apostles of the time. And here come Peter and John who are unlearned men and never been to seminary. But they said that they spoke with an authority. Can I tell you? There are some preachers right now that they go to school and they get the degrees, and I call them professional preachers, but can't preach a lick. And please hear me, schooling is important. I've been in the school. Yes, I went back to school, but my anointing does not come from the school. My anointing comes from the one that I'm connected to, and his name is Jesus. And some of you watch this. You don't understand the power of that connection. So you spending your time trying to get ahead with dealing with Anthony. Not knowing that if you just had the anointing, you didn't need Anthony. And some of you giving up the Shekinah glory for Shanika. Shanika. Because there's something about when God anoints you because understand God never calls you because you're so smart. God, God calls those who are willing to serve and he will equip them with what you need. If you already think you got it, God can't use you. God needs somebody who understands that I was nothing without him, that God pulled me up out of the mock and mire clay of life and dust me off and made something out of me. And if there's anything good in this life, all glory goes back to that, say his name. It goes back to him. Yeah, they were unlearned men. And then he said, but they noticed that they were men who dealt and who hung with Jesus. Can you imagine their mind? I thought we got rid of him. Didn't we crucify him about 50 some days ago? I thought we were done with him. And now he got his peons walking around here doing miracles. Listen, let's, let's get them out so we can converse with one another. So he put them out of the chamber and they came together, all of the big wheels in Jerusalem, and said, okay, man, what are we going to do? It's like the people are listening to him. Man, they got a miracle standing right there beside. We can't deny the miracle. I mean, this, this was Peanut that used to hang at the gate for the last 40 some years. Everybody know him. Now he's walking around. And we can't. We can't do much to these guys because if we do, it will start a riot. Can I tell you something? The, the reason why people in power stay in power, because they use the media to switch the narrative and cause you to believe what they want you to believe. And that's the reason why we don't get upset because they understand people of color, the only thing we do is react to stuff. And we're going to raise, um, we going to raise sand for a little while and then we're going to go back to sleep. And we might wake up again in four years when it's time to vote for another president. You were watching on January 6th when a bunch of Trump supporters went down and attacked the Capitol. We saw that, didn't we? And now they're trying to tell us that it didn't happen. You didn't see what you saw. They wasn't rioting. Come on, the devil is a liar. But they control the narrative, and they have shut people down who will expose them. That's what's going on here. They said, okay, how can we shut this thing down quietly that we can regain and keep our power? So finally, they said, we tell you what, we're going to let them go, but we're going to threaten them. We're going to threaten them that they can't preach or teach in the name of Jesus anymore. They brought him in, and he set him down, and he said, hey, we're going to let y'all go, but here's the thing. Y'all can't preach or teach in that name. I love this because these men says, you want us to obey you more than God? Let me say this, and I've seen this in my over 50-some years of living. 
Whenever there is a strong black leader, he has to be careful because the devil will come and give him an opportunity to sell out. And too many in our community, they throw them a few coins and they shut their mouths and you don't hear nothing else about them. And I just get tired of sitting in groups of having black men defending white men. At some point, we got to have the, oh, I almost said it like I wanted to say it. We, we got to have the courage to be able to speak truth to power and not worry if they cut your money off. Because if you're dependent on them, they're already your God. But when you get to the place that you understand that everything that I have and everything that I will be is coming from him and you don't have the authority to cut off my blessing. Peter says, man, you want me to do what? You want me to do what? You want me to stop preaching and teaching in his name? Then I have to stop preaching and teaching. Because there's no other power out there that can change anything. I'll never forget, i never forget, some years ago they invited me and wanted me to open up the city council and pray. And the lady called and said, uh, uh, Pastor Belton, we would love to have you to be the pastor this, this month or open up the city council. But we, we want to make sure that your prayer is all inclusive. I said, please understand me. I don't know what that big word means. <laughs> well, well, you know, where the city represents all groups of people and all types of religion. I said, I get that. And so uh, I, I guess what you're saying to me that uh, you don't want me to call the name of Jesus. She says, well, uh, you know, they're Muslims. I said, I tell you what, you go talk to your boss and you come back to me. Because if you want me to pray, the only prayers I can pray is in the name of Jesus. Because my words have no authority. The only authority that I have is in the name of Jesus. She called me back and said, you can pray how you want to pray. Thank you, baby. Because at some point, at some point, the devil will threaten you. The devil would threaten you, just, just pray, but don't say Jesus. You can say God, but don't say Jesus. Uh, and, and there are all kinds of gods, but Jesus says there's only one way to the Father, and it's by him, and his name is Jesus of Nazareth. And too many of us allow the fear of the world to cause us to shut our mouth. We preach and we teach this watered down gospel because we don't want to offend nobody. Let me tell you something. The gospel itself is offensive. The gospel gets up in your face and says living as an adulterer is wrong. Living as a liar is wrong. Living as a cheat is wrong. And you are. That's offensive. And if we want to stroke people's ego and make them feel good, you're going to allow them to die and go to hell. You got to be able to be bold enough to say, listen, the wage of sin is still death. And living like you want to live will take you to hell. But there is a God that loves you enough that died on a hill called Calvary that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And his name is Jesus, not Buddha, not Muhammad. No, all of them are dead. You can find their bones, but Jesus have no bones nowhere on the earth because the tomb is empty. He said, we'll let you go if you're willing, if you're willing to not mention his name. And Peter says, you want us to obey you more than God? Do you fear people more than you fear God? I wonder sometimes because th this culture in which we live, there's no, there's no fear of God. There's no reverence of God. And maybe, maybe preachers, maybe we're the fault. Maybe we've been preaching so much grace. 
But y'all think that God just lets you go on anything. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I, I, if I told you that. Great Grace is true and grace is good and grace is wonderful and grace is the reason why I am. But Paul says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? At some point, grace ought to get you out. And living righteously ought to keep you out. Thank you for those three claps. One, two, three. He says, he says, we'll let you go. Peter says, man, listen, how can we not speak on what we've seen and heard. P Peter says, pretty much, how, how can I be exposed to this truth and then spend the rest of my life pretending like I didn't experience it? Because I will tell you, the day you encounter the risen Savior, your life can't go back the same. And if you are able to go back to the same way of living, the same way of talking, there's a good chance you didn't run into Jesus. You probably ran into Jose. <laughs> Is there somebody in here you know that your life has not been the same? No, I'm not perfect, and no, I'm not sinless, but I do learn how to sin less now because I met the man named Jesus, and there are places that I used to go, but I don't go no more. That's some stuff I used to say I don't say no more. There's some way I used to treat you, and I don't treat you that way no more. It's all because of this man called Jesus. Say his name. And Peter says, listen, that's what it takes for us to not get out of this chamber then do what you must because I've seen it with my own eyes I've experienced this in my own life I'm living something now that nobody told me I got a relationship now because I know him to be real I, I'm not serving grandmama God anymore. I'm not shouting on pastor's God anymore. I got a God of my own who knows my name, who keeps me in the midst of my trouble, who makes a way out of no way, who pulls me out of darkness and put me into the marvelous light. I got a God, and maybe your God name, maybe your God name is Job. Maybe your God name is money. Maybe your God name is sex. Maybe your God name is Bob, Frank, or Harry. But my God name is Jesus of Nazareth. And I'm telling you, there's no God like my God because can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. So I don't have nothing else to preach but Jesus. Verse 21, the council then threatened them further. But they finally let them go because they didn't know how to punish them since they would start a riot because the people were listening to them. I like that part right there. When your haters don't know how to attack you. Tell me God won't do it. When they don't like you, but they know they can't get to you. <laughs> they, they don't like what's going on in your life. They want to stop it, but it seems like every corner that they turn, God blocks it. And I come to tell you, when you sleep and God's blocking some stuff, yeah, that's why you don't have to get upset running behind folk and running behind every lie and trying to chase down all your haters. Just do what God told you to do, and God will take care of your haters. God will make sure that every tongue that rises up against you, that God say, I'll shut it down before it even gets to you, and you just stay where I place you and do what I call you to do. Anybody ever had God to take care of some folk? <laughs> Anybody looked around and those who tried to dig a ditch for you, you saw them crawling out of the same ditch because we got a God on our side and our God sits high. Come here, old preacher, and looks low. God has his eye on us. So finally, they said, we're going to let him go. 
for everyone was praising God for the miraculous sign that was performed in this man who had been laying for over 40 years. I hope you read the remainder of this text because Peter and John goes to the church and goes to the other elders and tell them what happened. Tell them, hey, man, you know what? They pulled us in there because we were saving folk and healing folk. And then, you know what? They had the audacity to threaten us. But tell them, John, what I did. I looked them in the eye. <laughs> I stood there with my chest up. And I can imagine Peter retelling that story because, remember, Peter got to clean some stuff up. You know, he, he started out real bad. He started out as a coward. Now, this is the opportunity. Now, Peter says, that won't happen again. That, that won't happen again. Can I talk to somebody? You messed up. You failed him. But you get another chance. And you ought to make this chance good. You ought to say, you know what? It won't happen again. I fell for the devil trick that time, but no, it won't happen again. No, keep riding by. Don't wink at me. Don't look at me. Don't buy me nothing. No, I got my eye on the prize, and I will not let it go. Say his name. They left. They went back to the church. Here's the thing, and I'm done. This name called Jesus, there's no magic in it. Magic is in the one that the name is connected to. And if you don't know him, then leave his name alone. You remember in Acts, a little later on, some of the guys saw the apostles casting out devils in Jesus' name. And here these guys say, hey, I want to do that trick too. So they go to a demon-possessed man and say, in the name of Jesus, come out of him. I love this because... You might not respect and honor the name, but demons do. The demon says, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? But catch this. But the demons came out because they had to respond to the name of Jesus. But when the, the demons came out and said, okay, you ain't got no protection. The Bible says the demons jumped on them and whooped them half to death. Can I tell you the reason why we're able to endure and the world don't take us down is because we have some protection that the devil knows that he can only do so much to us because we are covered in that name. I'm done. I'm done. It gets hard sometimes in such a sin-sick world to continue to be bold in that name. In the 20th chapter... Of Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, he gets to the place where he tells God, I'm done. Every message you give me, I'm telling Israel what's going to happen to them. Nobody likes listening to my messages because I tell the truth. He says, I'm done. Verse 20, listen to this. Jeremiah says, then I says, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. Watch this. But his word in my heart was like a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary of holding it back and I could not hold it back. Anybody in here, I'm talking to Christians now. Anybody ever tried to quit? Anybody was ready to throw in the tower? You had made your mind up. I ain't singing no more. I ain't teaching no more. I ain't preaching no more. I ain't ushering no more. I ain't doing this. I ain't doing that. And you felt good all of a sudden. Late in the midnight hour. While you trying to get sleep. God slips up in your bedroom. And won't let you rest. And I believe he just reminds Jeremiah. And says, if you're not going to talk about me. Who are you going to talk about? If you're not going to sing about me, who are you going to sing about? If you're not going to teach about me, who are you going to teach about? Who was the one that saved your soul? Who was the one that made a way out of no way? Who was the one that pulled you up out of the ghetto? Who was the one that saved your body and healed your soul? Who was the one? If you 
you ain't going to talk about me, who you going to talk about? Can I tell you? Whatever. I'm done. I'm done. But whatever is good in your life. I'm talking about what's real good in your life. You can't help but tell somebody. I wish I had somebody. I can't help but say something about him. Because I realize that I'm here because of him. Now, if you still think you're here because of you, that's okay. But let's go home now. Just the five people in here who realize that if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, you want me to talk about my job and talk about my education and talk about my money. I'm going to tell you that it was Jesus. How did you get out of school, Jesus? How did you raise them children, Jesus? How did you keep your house, Jesus? How did you get healed, Jesus? That's my story, Jesus, Jesus. Say his name, there's power in that name. Demons tremble at that name. It's by that name that you can be saved. The only way you're going to get to heaven is you better be connected to that name. Come to the door if you want, talking about your mama name. Come to the door talking about the president's name. You ain't getting in. You can come in there talking about your homeboy's name. You can give your banker's name. You can give your realtor's name, but you ain't going nowhere. But you better come there and say, in the name of Jesus. That's how I got here. That's the only way I made it here is in the name of Jesus. And I come to tell you, won't he keep you? Won't he make a way out of no way? Won't he be a friend when you need a friend? Won't he be a bridge over troubled water? Name is power in the name of Jesus. The problem is, Stan, I'm done, is that we don't mind calling everybody else's name. We don't want to call Jesus. We want to whisper his name. Yeah, we, we, we talk religion. We talk about God all day long. But you don't want to say Jesus. They'll let you talk about God on your job, talk about God wherever you go in the courthouse, but they don't want you to talk about Jesus. But you got to get to the place that you realize that there's power in that name, that there's authority attached to that name, and if God puts you someplace that people are coming after you because of saying his name, it is God's responsibility to protect you. And he will. That's where my boldness come from. <laughs> I don't care who's in the room. I was in a room just past Wednesday with a bunch of white pastors and black pastors. And we were talking about the situation in North New York, when a young white boy went in there and killed all those black people. And white preachers went to their, their little safe place. They start talking about theology and talking about the sin nature of man. And, and then there's always some black preacher in the room who feels a need to protect him and say, you know what? I, I'll probably do the same thing. You know, all of our hearts are wicked. I sat there as long as I could. I, I, I was holding myself. And I saw where they were going to find. I said, listen, as long as we're going to talk about this, let's talk real talk. No, the real issue is not about sin. And I understand that we can see this with some theological lens. And I understand. I said, but that's safe. I said, what we got to talk about is that these acts continue to happen and it's white men that are doing it. I said, tell me five black men, hear me Facebook, five black men who walked up in anybody's church and killed a bunch of white folk. Give me five black men who's went up in a synagogue and killed a bunch of Jews. Give me five black men who walked up in a school and killed a bunch of No. The real issue is you switching the narrative. You tell America that black men are the one to be feared when wicked white men are doing all the killing. There's power in his name. 
You get to the place where you speak truth and understand that as long as you're speaking truth and standing in truth, you are the majority because the Lord Jesus Christ stands with you. I won't be bought. Mm -mm. You don't have enough. Truth has to be spoken. But I want you to understand that God has given you the same boldness. You stand in truth. You defend those who don't have a voice. You rise up in authority because God has not just anointed your pastor, he's anointed you too. Open up your mouth and say that name. Shoot, walk through your company just whispering that name. Every corner, Jesus. 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 That, that, that ought to be your new cuss word. Instead of blessing them out, go ahead and just hit them with Jesus. And I know black folks, y'all so creative, y'all can say it in so many ways that you they'll get the point. Jesus. 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 There's power in that name. I said I was done with. I'm sorry I got y'all standing. Mm -hmm. They already sang it. I see Josh and I got to get them on, on point. Mm, something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. It is the... Mm, I know. Oh, how I love you. with the old. I just want you to turn to somebody and just say his name. Say it like you need something from him. Say it like you know him. Say it like you're glad that he came here. Call his name, demons start to tremble. There's power in that name. Listen. Maybe you're out there this afternoon and you never asked this man named Jesus to be Lord of your life. You never asked him to save your soul. Jesus' main purpose of coming is not to heal, not to deliver, not to set free, but he came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And we get that through salvation. 
The Bible says if you believe in your heart and profess with your mouth that Jesus loved you enough to die for you, and you're willing to ask him to forgive you of your sins, the Bible says you shall be saved. Maybe you're out there this morning, this afternoon, and you want Jesus to be Lord of your life. You want him to lead and to direct you for the rest of your life. You're tired of doing life your way and doing it in a way that's bringing you trouble and trials and tribulation. You want something new. If that's you out there and you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, just throw your hand up in the air where you are right now. Just throw your hand up in the air where you are right now. Maybe you're already saved, but you know you need a church home. If you want to make word of change your place of worship, you want to become a part of our family, I want you to just raise your hand where you are. That's you. That's you. Just throw your hands up in the air. Hallelujah. 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 Maybe you desire prayer. We open the altar for prayer. Maybe you want to come and just tell God, thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for a Savior. Thank you for a Redeemer. Yes, sir. Sing that. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. There's power. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising. There's an army rising up to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Father. It is in your son's name for what your words say, God, where two or three are gathered in his name, you shall be in the midst. And so, God, we're grateful that you're here right now. Lord Jesus, we know that if you have come, you have come with your Shekinah glory. You have come with that chain-breaking power. Father, your people now stand in need. The people need to know, God, that there's still power in that name. Your people need to know that that's a name they still can call on. They need to know that dem demons still tremble at that name. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, break yokes. Destroy bondages, men relationships, God. In the name of Jesus, heal hearts. Dry up tear-stained eyes. In the name of Jesus, God, fix broken marriages. In the name of Jesus, God, go after our wayward children. Help them to know, God, that you love them just as much as we do. In the name of Jesus. What the enemy tries to do, God, we pray in your name that you would destroy it. But you said that when he comes in like a flood, that you will lift a standard against him. God, we just believe that you love us. You loved us enough that you sent your son to die. God, that man named Jesus died on a rugged cross. 
hung there from the third to the ninth hour, allowed his body to be beaten and bruised, pierced in his side, God, and then buried in a bar or two, went to hell on our behalf, God, but early one Sunday morning, God, you got him up with all power in his hand. And this is why we gather, God. We gather in the name of Jesus. We don't gather in any of our names, God. We don't even gather in the name of word of change. We gather in the name of Jesus because you said, if he be lifted up, you will draw all men unto you. So, God, here we are standing, waiting, God, for you to be God in our lives. Heal, set free, deliver, God. Give us what we need. God, we thank you for who you are and who you've been. Bless these, your people. God, I don't know what they stand in need of, but I know you have power to do it, God. I know you have power to do it, God. So move on our behalf, God. We call upon you now in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And God, we still believe there's power in that name. So Father, continue to bless your people. May this be a day of change. May this be a day of breakthrough. May this be a day, God, that your people find relief. May those who struggle with fear, God, find faith. May those who struggle with pain and suffering, God, may they find relief. God, we know that everything that we need is in you. And God, we're trusting you now to be God. Father, bless the hands that have given and those that shall give. Break it and multiply. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide on each and every one of us henceforth now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Have an amazing Sunday. Don't forget to say his name. Hallelujah.